It was a report with lots of facts, but fewer answers. Some technical observations, a technical summary, and then the investigative summary. Chief Elliot Isaac detailed a timeline, giving a minute-by-minute -minute account of the tragedy playing out, for the first time showing pictures from school security. This slide uh, depicts Mr. Kyle Plush walking across the parking lot. Kyle Plush arriving at the van and the first 911 call at 3.14 p.m. April 10th. The quality of the sound was muffled. We learned the phone was in Kyle's pocket. That's why he couldn't be heard clearly and why he couldn't hear 911 call takers. Police were dispatched to the school. Isaac said they were there 14 minutes but didn't get out of the vehicle. Uh, their explanation was to to cover more ground. There were multiple lots to, to check. But a lot of questions are unanswered, like why didn't officers focus on vans? Kyle had told 911 he was in a van. There weren't hundreds of vans, you know? There were enough that they could have been given individual attention. Also verified, 911 had the coordinates of Kyle's cell phone. They were not used to help find him, even though our tests showed those numbers dropped the pin nearly on top of the parking spot where he was eventually found. If you put in those coordinates, where does it come up? And why didn't we do that? What our CAD system would show if you entered those coordinates, and it is a very close proximity. It was another question without a complete answer and another explanation that needed more explaining. Yeah, now the plan is to come back Tuesday, May 29th. That's two weeks from now to try and fix this whole problem. That's the goal, and no one felt like they could do that with the information they got today. Reporting live, Brian Hamrick, WLWT News 5.